Pick up a shovel and get digging, bitches, because we're reviewing 2019's Pet Cemetery. Right here on Miscast Entertainment. Here's Johnny. I love the smell of my cup in the morning. Welcome back, you miscast miscreants, to another episode of Miscast Entertainment Movie Reviews with your host, JJ. You know, uh, a lot of people find the term snowflake to be very offensive, but what about sausage party? I really don't have much to say about that. (laughs) And your other host, William Davis Moore. And we're talking like old dead animals and remakes. In the woods today, L.A. discovered a charming little landmark. Place to bury our pets and remember them. Might seem scary, but it's not. The whole town's been using this place for generations. Folks make a kind of ritual out of it. They fear that place. There's something up there. Something that dates way back. That cat was dead. That brings things back. Church? I know what you're thinking of doing. But they don't come back the same. Daddy. I saw this movie a week ago. Yes, you did. Uh, it was like a like a sneak peek, and uh, Jason Clark showed up at uh, the preview, which was pretty cool. And his uh, wife, his well, his movie wife showed up also, but um, I didn't recognize her because she hadn't done a lot of stuff that that I had seen. But explain that though, like, so what do you mean they showed up? Yeah. So what happens is uh, we live in Miami, Florida, and uh, because of that, we get access to a lot of like uh, sneak peeks and a lot of stuff apparently miami is like a place that everybody knows about and people want to come to because of the weather and blah 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 some people yeah <laughs> uh people who like nice weather <laughs> <laughs> so uh right before the movie was about to start uh this guy was like hey by the way jason clark is here and he came up and everybody clapped and uh me included I, uh, that's exactly what i did right there and uh, he came up and we got to an, you know ask him some questions and he gave us some answers and it was pretty cool. Dude, that's freaking awesome, man. Yeah. Twenty one million dollar budget and seventy one percent critic score. Okay, I bet like ten million dollars of that went to the cats. Yeah, the cats? Yeah. Like the, the actual church cat? <laughs> yeah, there was there was like six six actors who who were the church cats. Really? Yeah. All those goddamn hairballs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awful. It's got a 50% audience score, but no one's seen it, so that's uh, bullshit. Yeah. Um, the audience score is the only one that matters anyway, in the most part. It was directed by Kevin Kolsch. Who? Kolsch? Kolsch? Is it Kolsch? 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 I don't know who the fuck that is, and I don't know what he... What has he directed besides this movie? Well, I have nothing down, because I looked up what he directed, and yeah. I've never heard of it, and then it doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. That sounds about right. So, <laughs> yeah. it's bad. Yeah. Uh, but not just him. It was Den- Dennis Widmeyer, too. Who's that? Uh, they work together. They're kind of like the uh, the Farley brothers of bad horror. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> um, I got a feeling his next movie is not going to say from the director of Pet Cemetery. Hell no. No. Obviously, it stars Jason Clarke. He brought that up as yeah. Lewis Creed. Obviously, he played John Connor. Um, it's got Amy uh, Simetz as Rachel Creed. She played... Uh, Maggie Ferris in Alien Covenant. Oh, Alien Covenant. Yeah, she was like, I think the pilot or some shit. Like she had. A, when I saw her, I was like, oh, I've seen this lady before. But yeah, I me too. Can't put my finger it on was, it. It was definitely Alien Covenant. Okay. Then we got John Lithgow yeah. as Judd Crandall. Yes, I love him. I loved him in that movie, uh, Harry and the Hendersons. Oh my gosh! I wish I would have thought of that. Harry and the Hendersons was the first movie I ever saw in the movie theater by myself. Really? Yeah. It was a great movie. I mean, I remember when that came out and it was it was awesome. It was cool. I was sitting in the movie theater by myself and then I remember like um I must have been 
like 10 years old yeah, and the right. movie theater was empty. And then all of a sudden all these teenagers came in and they ran up and down the hall as I was watching Harry and the Hendersons. And I, I remember thinking, well, these kids are having so much fun. Here I am like an asshole watching this movie by myself. <laughs> then we've got, uh, I'm not even going to pronounce her name. Ellie Creed. I think it's French. I think it's Jeté. Jeté. I, I took so. one of those this morning <laughs> with my pinky up. <laughs> this movie actually had a, a weak cast, man. Like it, there was super no, weak. That was it. That was the cast. Yeah. Like uh, the side characters were extras. Yeah. In my opinion. So that's it. What you got? Honestly, uh, <clears throat> look, the only value this movie has is by comparing it to the original. By itself, if you were to watch this movie by itself, uh, it's very lame. It's very tame. It's not a very good horror movie. Um, the movie itself tells you every, every time there's a scare, the movie tells you, like, look, we're about to try to scare you right now. Yeah. Uh, it never builds up to a level of dread. It never builds up to a very high level of scariness. I think maybe preteens might find this movie a little frightening, but for the most part, yeah. um, I don't think a, you know, a savvy horror movie fan is going to find this movie. I mean, terrifying at all, to be no honest with you. Way. <laughs> I mean, the original movie was not very scary as it is. The original movie is very campy. And, uh, I think it has a value in its campiness. This movie doesn't doesn't do it for me at all. I mean, and keep in mind this is this is a non spoiler review. I don't know if we've told people that, but oh, it is. So far, so far, this is very non spoiler. No one told me that. <laughs> I don't know who this movie is for. Honestly, I think I think this movie is for people who have seen the original and want something a little different. And the differences that it supplies aren't worth it. How many people are there that like are still fans of the Pet Cemetery? I'm sure there's quite a few like cult classic people sure but they actually want it to be changed because usually it's the opposite no i agree <laughs> i agree that 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 group is very is is very small like tiny, tiny. Like, i don't know why they did this movie i think i think they completely dropped the ball on this movie i think a very savvy director uh would have taken a different approach for example way different uh i'm gonna go into a spoiler realm spoilers now spoilers okay so if you've seen the original movie, you know that there's a the most um, I would say iconic scene of the movie is when the little boy dies. You know, he gets run over by the truck. The little shoe, you know, bounces on the concrete. Get and, the baby. Yeah. Get the baby. You know, so you're you're waiting for that moment to come. What these guys did was they said, okay, well, we can't do that because that would be too obvious. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill off a different character. Sure. So and the only way that you would appreciate the fact that they did something different is if you watched the original. And, and all the twists that they did, in, including the twist at the end of the movie, which I'll, we should get to later on, um, is only a twist because you know the original movie. Now, when Jason Clark showed up at my viewing, he said, uh, they asked him a question about like what was some of the inspirations of this movie, and he said to the whole crowd, "Well, we followed the book a little bit closer, and that's not true at all. The original movie followed the book very closely. The movie that that just came out in t in 2019 is a remake of the original uh, 1989 89 movie. It does it is not a reinterpretation of the book at all." It's it almost does not shot go, by shot. It is shot by shot. Yeah, and pretty that's, close. And that's some of the problem because you're watching the movie and you're going, damn, this is shot by shot. What the fuck's going on here? Like, I know exactly what's going to happen. But instead of the little boy getting run over in the 2019 movie, the little girl gets run over. The daughter gets run over. But that's not even a twist, though, because right. you know she's going to be murderous. So, like, you expect it. Like, it's not, it's not like, surprising when she goes crazy. Exactly. So. As, as you're watching the movie... You're thinking to yourself, damn, dude, is this a scene where the little boy gets run over? But you're thinking to yourself, shit, because the little boy got run over in the original movie, yeah, they can't right. do this now. So who are they going to kill now? They obviously have to kill the little girl. And because your mind is going through all these different things as you're watching the movie, you are no longer in the movie. Right, right. That's you are a person right. sitting at the movie theater. You're not 
you know, you're not in the movie and that is a problem. Yeah. You know, because one thing that movies try to do is they try to lure you in. The suspension of disbelief goes out the window when all of a sudden you realize that you are sitting in a movie theater debating on what these producers decided to do in order to fuck with your brain a little bit more. But by the time you realize what's happening, you realize that they're not fucking with you at all. They're no. doing the most obvious thing that they could have done. Yeah. And that is a gigantic flaw in the making of this movie. My issue with uh, the third act straight off the bat was it started off kind of cool. I, I, I was all right with that whole like, all right, they kill the chick and not the dude. All right, fine. When she came back, it was, you know, I was kind of into it. You know, she was talking. It was weird. She had that fucking lazy eye. <laughs> yes. Like, uh, yeah. You know, he f saw the stitches in the back of her head, but it was only that 10 minutes. Yeah. That, that was probably the best part of the whole movie, in my opinion. I was agree. That, that 10 minutes of the third act. I agree because what I think was missing from the first movie and this movie are the logistics of bringing somebody back from the dead. Yes. Okay. Now, if somebody dies and there's no funeral, somebody just gets run over, immediately you take their corpse to the pet cemetery. Sure. You bring them back up. Everything's cool. Right. But once you have a funeral for them, it means that, A, the police got involved. Uh, their social security number is wiped out. So this kid, whoever they brought back, all of a sudden, they have no life. If this kid decides to grow up and apply for a credit card or go to rent an apartment, they're going to be accused of having a false identity. You're not even talking about the worst part. What's they've the worst part? They've been embalmed. Their organs have been jacked with. Their heads been, they've been yeah. autopsied. Yeah. They, they're all messed up. They're not. They're not a functioning body anymore no. in any respect. No. Even if you try to reanimate shit, it's not yeah. all there. Like, yeah. You know, they've removed stuff. There's just like a bunch of That's like shit. Had like the you got a bunch of shit inside your chest. Yeah. You can't get credit. You can't get an apartment. <laughs> you can't rent a car. You'll never like, you can't go to fucking Disney World and like say, oh, you know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to go stay at the Dolphin. And <laughs> I know it's crazy. I mean, the way they turn the story into like the zombie apocalypse, like they're going to take over the world with yeah. these zombie, whatever the fuck Well, is going we never on. got into the ending. The idea is that they're going to start like populating the world with this demon. Well, there, like, there's, there's a big deviation between the original movie and this new movie sure. and what happens in the 100%. end. And that's something yeah. that I want to talk about. 100%. So in the original and of the movie, the 1989 version, 89. uh, the wife gets killed sure. and the husband decides, look, she's got a fresh corpse. Uh, she's still a little warm. I'm going to go uh, bury her over in the Indian burial ground and maybe this time it'll work out a little better. It doesn't. She comes her back a little sick. Messed her, up, but who cares? <laughs> she's very drooly. Her eyes missing. She's <laughs> the end of making out. It's like the grossest kiss in movie history. It's I got to say. It's pretty awesome though. <laughs> but in this new movie, uh, they all decide to be fucking zombies. That's what I'm saying. They all decide to resurrect each other, and they're a zombie family. And the poor kid Gage, who's in the car now, is like, "Oh fuck, dude, my parents are back," which is good. But on the downside, they're all fucking bunch of zombies. They're he gonna kill me, know. and they're gonna put me, my ass, in the fucking. Uh, I don't know. It, that ending was really bad, man. Yeah, there was no character development. No. Whatsoever in the whole movie. Like, nobody had, like, reasons for what they were doing. Oh, which is one of the things that bothers me a lot about the movie is that um, in both versions, Judd, the old man, uh, played by John Lithgow in, in the more recent yeah. version, in both, in both versions of the movie, the cat dies, right? And he's like, oh, you know what? I'll take it to the pet cemetery and don't worry what happens next. Yeah. It's going to be a little creepy, but just, you know, roll with me and uh, you'll see what happens. And then afterwards, he has so much regret and he ends up telling the father in both movies, I buried my dog there and the dog came back rabid and we ended up shooting his ass again. Uh, and yes, we buried a human there, even though I said I didn't, I buried a human there and that motherfucker came back like a fucking zombie terrorizing the whole town in both versions. So somebody who knows and has that experience really knows <laughs> why would they take this guy yeah to the pet, to the pet cemetery it now, makes no sense in the book in the book it makes a little bit of sense because in the book he's still married and his wife is still alive oh yes the doctor ends up helping his wife right and because he helped his wife 
a judge feels like, okay, well, now I'm going to help the doctor. So it makes a little bit more sense in the book. Dude, why, why is it so hard to do that? This 2019 <laughs> movie is a remake of the original movie, yeah. not a reinterpretation of the original book. It reminds me of that 90s remake of Psycho. Yes. Like where they were like, oh, we're going to make it so so much better, but it's really shot by shot. It was and the same shit, made it worse. except worse. Yeah, yeah worse. Exactly. It's, same, it's like a student's try at making a, yes. a, a, a Alfred Hitchcock yeah. film. To me, this feels like a movie that would have normally have been go- gone directly to Netflix. If that, I don't even know if Netflix would have picked this up. Maybe Hulu would have yeah. grabbed that shit. I don't know. It's it's pretty bad. But the dude did look like the original Gage. I mean, they they, they did pick a fine, oh, yeah. find a kid that looked like the original. That Indian legend, though, uh, that tripped me out because in Ohio we have the same legend. Yeah, there's a legend in Swan where there's this like demon with antler, like deer antlers that has like red eyes, and he walks through the forest. And the movie they called the Windigo. Windigo, yeah. yeah. I think it might actually be the same name, but he walks through the forest and he like frightens children and steals souls and shit. And I swear, like there is a story that me and my friends have from when we were in high school walking through the woods where we thought we saw the thing like walking next to us with these glowing red eyes and shit. Wow. I shit you not. And if you're watching, you fuckers, you better comment. Don't be scared. <laughs> Can I tell you one thing that really bugs me about this movie? What the fuck bugs you about this movie? Okay. So your kid dies. You're going to go bury them in the burial ground you know they're gonna come back up right in both the fucking movies the fucking dad goes back home like you buried your kid up in the fucking forest wait for his ass oh shit (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) this motherfucker he goes back home so now this kid who's never been he's never been he or she have never been to the indian burial ground all of a sudden they have to make their way back of course by the time they fucking make their way back they're gonna be fucking pissed off (laughs) and psychotic you're gonna like let them wander through the woods where a fucking coyote or a bear (laughs) can just eat their undead ass as a parent it fucking pisses me off they could have at least waited at the barrier you know? Yeah, dude, just wait for your kid. <laughs> if if that was in my backyard as yeah. a kid, I would have had keggers there every freaking weekend. Yeah, dude. We've been burying we've been killing like like little tiny bugs and burying them and then yeah. sitting around like freaking smoking pot and watching them come out of the ground. <laughs> dude. Dude, how fun would it be? Look, you get yourself like a, pa- a pound of coke, a keg of beer, you have a fucking awesome overdose, right? Shit. You get buried oh, there. Oh yeah. Shit. You get buried you get buried in the Indian burial ground, you fucking come back and you're like, Woo! Let's do it again. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's that's a better movie than what we saw, man. That is a better movie. I think we should write movie. that movie. Yeah, we should. Hey, listen, if you motherfuckers <laughs> are watching this shit, don't steal our idea. So that's all I got, man. Me too. So what are you gonna grade this shizzle? Honestly, look, give it a grade. <laughs> for horror movie fans uh, that are looking for a scary movie, this is not the movie for you. It's not scary at all. If you're watching this movie for the very, very first time and you know nothing about it, honestly, it's a very weak horror movie. I think it's a, I think maybe preteens might find this movie scary. Yeah. But uh, horror fanatics like myself, it's it never reaches a level of terror at all. Uh, the only reason to watch this movie is to compare it to the original and laugh and shit on it. So if you're a fan of the original and you want to have like a good time, just kind of like having a couple beers and not giving a shit, watch this movie. I think you can have lots of laughs. Awesome. So I had a preteen sitting next to me. He couldn't have been more than 11 or 12. Uh, at, in the beginning, he was like, ah, ah, scream louder than anybody in the whole theater which wasn't bad because there was not very many people in the theater. Uh, but by the end of the movie, he said, um, I heard him whisper to himself, this movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I shit you not, dude. I started laughing so hard. Oh I looked at him. <laughs> and if, if an 11 or 12 year old says that, man, it ain't a horror movie. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to give it like a, Waver in between C minus and D plus, but I'm gonna give it a D minus. All right, there you go. All right, guys, you know the drill. If you like this shit, I hope you do. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, all that good stuff, and hit up the merch, man. Fund us. We need funding. Funding's good, and we have lots of cool designs like this one here. And this wow. One here. Yeah, man. Wow, that's a dope ass outfit. 
Yeah. Yeah. And as always, we'll see you next time. Peace.